So I want to talk to you about a phone consult that I did with a patient today, um, this recently. So the patient is a 53-year-old female with stage 1 breast cancer, ER positive, which means estrogen receptor positive, PR positive, or 2 negative, which is the most common form of cancer. Now she was diagnosed September 2019. So uh, she wanted to establish care and give my opinion. So the patient notes that she had a lumpectomy of a 2.2 centimeter tumor, which is about the size of a, a niche and uh, of the left breast. So she underwent two out of four chemotherapy sessions with a one hour infusion of uh, the chemotaxotere cytoxin and new lasta, which elevates the white count because her white count went so low, and steroids so she doesn't have bad reaction to the chemo. Um, she always took steroids on the day of her chemotherapy as, the, as well as after. So um, then, um, she, of, of note, the patient reports undergoing uh, hormone therapy in the past right before she had been taking hormones by another doctor. And so she said she wanted to report that in her history uh, because she had been diagnosed with uterine fibroids and the doctor had given her pro natural progesterone because of the growth of those fibroids. So the patient ha was offered conventional treatment and uh, integrative medical treatments and explained about the risk and benefits of both methodologies but she wanted to do as many things as natural as po and integrative as possible. She weighed 128 pounds, she's 5'2". She brought in blood work for me, a chemistry and a CBC, which is just very, very basic uh, blood work. So she also brought in her a lot of her reports. So she brought in a test called the Oncotype DX Breast Reoccurrence Score. And so that's a score that the doctors use to see if chemo would be beneficial. There was a study done about a year or so ago that indicated that most breast cancer, 70% or more, would not need chemo. So I highly recommend patients to do the Oncotype DX to see what their score is so that they can make their best educated decision with their doctor. So she brought in her MRI reports of her breast to show me um, where the lesion was and where, you know, what was, what was happening um, at the time before the surgery. Um, then she, uh, it said that, it showed the tumor and it said that there was a 1.8 centimeter biopsy proven cancer a budding, which means right next to the pectoralis muscle, which is that muscle right here. And there was no abnormal enhancement of the underlying muscle to indicate involvement. So um, then um, her lymph glands looked good. There were no, it said no lymphadenopathy, which means no enlarged lymph glands. So then fortunately the doctor ordered a bone scan to see if it could possibly be in the bones and it was not in the bones. So I discussed the patient's medical records in detail. She underwent a lumpectomy of the tumor. She did have a lymph node biopsy at the time of the lumpectomy and bone scan. The bone scan was negative. Now her Oncotype DX score was 22, which is pretty high. So the doctor initiated chemotherapy. So she, what she happened is she uh, was recommended at the comprehensive cancer care sent her to get chemotherapy because of her reoccurrence score. So she noted that she developed a very serious reaction to the chemotherapy with shortness of breath and um, the doc they had to give her medications and things to help her get through that. So she told the doctor that she doesn't think chemotherapy was for her. She reported that her oncologist insisting that she continues with the chemotherapy despite the reaction that she experienced. Then the second thing we discussed, we discussed circulating tumor cells in detour and I informed that the patient that the circulating tumor cells are the cells that, are, that are, occur after two millimeters of a growth of cancer. 
And so that is responsible for 95% of, of metastasis. So I advise the patient to have a blood draw for the RGCC Onconomics extract test, which checks the circulating tumor cells and all the natural things, because only natural things work on circulating tumor cells, and determine which supplements would be best for her. We discussed trauma and emotion, and she had informed us that she had had some lots of trauma, she had been going through a divorce, and that she was consulting a healer for her emotions. We discussed her diet in details, and she noticed that she is consulting with a functional medicine doctor who recommended she take supplements uh, for nutritional, she take something for adrenal support, immune support, and an estrogen blocker. Um, and of note, the patient said that she was drinking wine daily. So I advised the patient to eliminate all alcohol from her daily life because that can be um, dis destructive and uh, interfering with her, us really getting the patient better. So we discussed the patient's activity in detail. Patient notes that she used to run regularly. However, she knows that her activity has decreased after surgery, which makes sense. So I, I, I advised the patient to just walk, to do walks. I advised her to do push-ups when she could and if she could. I asked her to do squats. I asked her to do sit-ups and planks, whatever was tolerable. I had warned the, the patient that weightlifting was very good to keep uh, the muscles healthy and improve bone strength. So we discussed the blood results that she had already had in detail, and I informed the patient that her liver enzymes were elevated. So I advised the patient to get an abdominal ultrasound and to get a liver cleanse. She had already volunteered though, she was going to start a five-day prolon fasting program, which I told the, encouraged the patient to continue with that plan. And then I advised the patient to consider some kind of fasting, intermittent fasting, day fasting, whatever day she could tolerate. Uh, the re patient also said that she had been under a lot of stress due to family and, um, and she was slightly depressed. So I put her on four mood, two uh, capsules twice a day to help her with her anxiety and depression. We discussed a liver flush and coffee enemas and I told her that the pa I told her to do liver flushes at least once a month for six months. Then um, uh, she patient also reports that she has men multiple dental amalgams, which are um, mercury fillings, and she also had five root canals. So I told the patient that she really needed to consult with a holistic dent dentist to address all the mercury fillings and the root canals. So root canals are a chronic infection in the mouth and unfortunately the dentist needs to remove the root canals because it's a chronic infection weighing down on the body. So um, I, I will tell you what I did, um, what I ordered. So on, because she had a very minimal blood test, I ordered C-reactive protein, which is a marker for inflammation and most cancer patients tend to have inflammation. I ordered a DHEA sulfate because that's the hormone of stress, immune, and longevity. And most patients who uh, have cancer have low DHEA. We ordered the NutriVal, which is a comprehensive vitamin, mineral, essential fatty acid, checking the gut. We checked Nagalase. We ordered the RGCC circulating tumor cell test with natural extracts only. We ordered hemoglobin A1C, which is a reflection of her blood sugar over 90 days. We ordered a G6PD to make sure that patients can tolerate IV uh, vitamin C. We did a comprehensive thyroid. We checked pro progesterone. I checked HCG, a quantitative HCG, since that's the hormone of malignancy. We checked an estrogen level because she's ER positive. A blood count, we check D-dimer. D-dimer tells you if you have a tendency to clot or metastasize. Testosterone, because testosterone is anti-breast cancer. We checked all of her tumor markers of breast. We did pregnenolone level, uh, a CBC chemistry, vitamin D. So, um, so this was the treatment plan for this patient. So we would draw the RGCC blood test. 
I would do the blood draw for nutrient testing or her local doctor could do it. I asked her to, encouraged her to do the prolon fasting program that she had already planned. I put her on C60, which a nano-sized uh, charcoal and olive oil to take one teaspoon a day. I put her on vi vitamin C, one teaspoon twice per day. I put her on pancreatic enzymes, Nutrizyme, five capsules three times a day on an empty stomach because pancreatic enzymes strip the coating of the cancer cell, um, uh, allowing, the patient, uh, allowing the immune system to recognize it. I put her on the four mood, uh, two twice a day for emotional support, liver flushes, and then I gave her Epsom salt baths that have baking soda, Eps, uh, Epsom salts, and clay. And so implement exercise upon tolerate whatever she could tolerate. I asked her to watch the documentary on the science of fasting. And then uh, I told her to continue her local emotional healing. And if she needed additional support, that I would help her. And I said to read a, an excellent book was Radical Remission. And then I gave her options um, for holistic dentistry. I told her to eliminate alcohol from her routine right now. I told her to read my book, Cancer Revolution, a Revolution, and I told her to read How Cancer Works and How You Win, because I wanted her to do bioenergetic testing so I could see the underlying causes that I couldn't detect in blood tests or scans or nutritional testing. So that was a typical phone consult of a patient um, upon uh, initial investigation. So I hope that helps.